Your heart starts racing, your breath shortens, your pupils dilate, and then, three seconds later, the image appears on the screen. A car crash, a violent scene, something your conscious mind couldn't possibly have known was coming. But your body knew, your body always knows. Here's what should terrify you. This isn't a glitch, it's not an anomaly. Across 26 independent studies spanning three decades, human physiology has been shown to respond to randomly selected emotional events before they occur, one to 10 seconds before conscious awareness is even possible. The question isn't whether this happens. The question is, what part of you is living in the future? And if time works the way we think it does, if cause must precede effect, if the future doesn't exist until it arrives, then every heartbeat that quickens before the stimulus, every micro-adjustment your nervous system makes in anticipation of something that hasn't happened yet, is impossible. You are impossible. But you're also here right now, listening to this. Which means one of two things. Either our understanding of time is catastrophically wrong, or your brain is doing something that shouldn't be allowed by the laws of physics. Your subconscious doesn't process the present. It tastes futures that haven't crystallized yet. It drinks from a well that shouldn't exist. And here's what will haunt you. If your body is responding to events that haven't happened, then what you call you the conscious mind watching these words, isn't the one making contact with reality. Something older is, something that exists in a different relationship to time entirely. By the end of this video, you won't just understand why military labs are racing to decode what mystics have known for millennia. You'll feel the exact moment when your certainty about time collapses when you realize that the now you're experiencing is already an echo, that your consciousness is always arriving late to a conversation your body started three seconds ago, with a future that technically doesn't exist yet. Let's start with what shouldn't be possible. Picture this, you're sitting in a lab. Electrodes measure your heart rate, skin conductance, pupil dilation, a computer will randomly select images to show you, some neutral, like a landscape or a chair, others unsettling, shadows where no one should be, moments of danger. The key word is randomly. The computer makes its choice using quantum random number generators, the most unpredictable selection mechanism we know. Not even the universe has decided which image you'll see until the exact moment it appears. You stare at a blank screen, waiting. And here's where it gets strange. Before the computer makes its selection, before the photons hit your retina, before any sensory information could possibly reach your brain, your body changes, your heart rate shifts, your skin conductance spikes, your nervous system mobilizes resources as if it knows an emotional storm is coming. Scientists call this predictive anticipatory activity. It's predictive because it distinguishes between upcoming emotional and neutral stimuli. It's anticipatory because physiological changes occur before the future event. Think about what this means. Your unconscious body is reacting to a future that hasn't been determined yet to a random event that exists only as quantum probability. The effect is statistically significant for hundreds of participants and dozens of independent research groups. This isn't one eccentric scientist in a basement. This is reproducible data from Northwestern University, laboratories across Europe, research institutions that stake their reputations on methodological rigor. Your body is having a conversation with the future, and the part of you hearing these words right now is arriving late to the meeting. If all of this still sounds like an illusion, some statistical mirage born from noise and wishful thinking, then ask yourself this. Why did the world's most pragmatic minds start paying attention? 
When a phenomenon refuses to vanish under controlled conditions, when it survives replication, peer review, and statistical scrutiny, someone eventually pays attention. And when that someone is the military, it means the conversation has moved from curiosity to capability. DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency that brought you the internet, GPS, and voice assistance, launched a program called NEAT, Neural Evidence Aggregation Tool. The goal? To identify people at risk of suicide by reading pre-conscious brain signals rather than relying on consciously filtered responses. Think about the implications. If pre-conscious signals can predict internal states before the conscious mind is aware of them, what else can they predict? The Pentagon knows something profound. The lag between unconscious processing and conscious awareness isn't a bug. It's a feature that can be exploited. Soldiers in classified experiments showed statistically significant presentiment of random stimuli. Their bodies prepared for threats that quantum mechanics said couldn't be known. The data was quietly absorbed into black budget programs focused on enhancing human threat detection, not through better training, but through understanding how the nervous system already accesses information it shouldn't have. What the military discovered, and what they're not advertising, is that intuition might be the brain accessing information that exists in a time non-linear way. That the gut feeling that saves a soldier's life might not be rapid pattern matching. It might be a genuine backward reach through time. Because if your body responds to future events before they're selected, you're not predicting. You're remembering forward. Let's talk about why this is theoretically possible, not just statistically anomalous, but actually consistent with cutting edge physics. In quantum mechanics, particles exist in superposition, multiple states simultaneously, until observation collapses them into definiteness. The observer effect isn't mystical woo, it's experimentally verified reality. Consciousness, or at least measurement, plays a role in determining outcomes. Now stretch that principle. Recent research proposes that anomalous information anticipation could be explained through quantum-like implicit learning mechanisms grounded in principles of non-locality and entanglement. Non-locality means particles can influence each other instantaneously across space. Entanglement means what happens to one particle instantaneously affects its partner, regardless of distance. What if time is subject to similar entanglement? What if the present moment is quantum entangled with near-future states, and your nervous system, which operates on electrochemical processes subject to quantum effects, can sense that entanglement? Your brain wouldn't be seeing the future in some mystical sense. It would be detecting correlations in a probability field that includes both present and imminent states. The future wouldn't be predetermined. It would exist as a landscape of potentials and your subconscious would be sampling that landscape. Think about dreams where you experience hours while only minutes pass in clock time. Think about the hyper-focused state where hours vanish in what feels like moments. Your subjective experience of time is already radically variable. What if your nervous system sometimes slips between different temporal reference frames? The past doesn't haunt you because it's gone. It haunts you because it still is, existing in the four-dimensional block universe as an eternal coordinate. And the future doesn't arrive. You approach it like a landscape that's always been there, hidden only by the limitations of your consciousness's current position. So your nervous system is potentially quantum entangled with the future. But here's where it gets even stranger. Your brain doesn't even need mystical quantum mechanics to do something that looks a lot like time travel. Because while physicists are mapping probability fields and temporal entanglement, 
neuroscientists have discovered something equally unsettling. Your brain is already living in the future. Not metaphorically, literally. Every single moment of your conscious experience is actually a prediction your brain made a few hundred milliseconds ago. Which means the present you think you're experiencing, you're already late to it. Modern neuroscience increasingly recognizes that predictive processing may be one of the fundamental principles of brain functioning. The brain doesn't simply react to stimuli, but constantly generates predictions about incoming sensory information and updates those predictions based on prediction errors. Your brain is a prediction machine. It's running simulations of the next moment, the next five seconds, the next hour. It has to because the speed of neural processing is slow compared to the speed of the world. By the time you consciously register a car swerving into your lane, it's already too late. Your unconscious spotted the probabilistic trajectory and initiated evasive action before your conscious mind registered danger. But here's the question that haunts cutting-edge neuroscience. Where does the brain get the information for these predictions? Standard answer, past experience, pattern matching, Bayesian inference drawing on stored memories. Except presentiment doesn't involve patterns you've seen before. The physiological response distinguishes between randomly selected future stimuli before any information about which stimulus will appear could possibly exist. This isn't your brain predicting that the sun will rise tomorrow based on it rising every previous day. This is your brain responding to a coin flip before the coin leaves the hand. Here's the uncomfortable truth. Scientists have no idea what consciousness is or how it relates to time. They know the brain generates correlates of consciousness, electrical patterns, neurochemical cascades, networks of activity, but they can't explain why there's something it's like to be you. Why the information processing happening in your skull feels like anything at all. The hard problem of consciousness remains unsolved. And maybe it's unsolved because researchers are asking it within a framework, time as linear, consciousness as emergent from matter, that's fundamentally wrong. What if consciousness isn't generated by the brain, but filtered through it? What if your brain is less like a computer that creates the simulation and more like a radio that tunes into a signal that exists independently? That would explain presentiment. If consciousness isn't strictly bound to the temporal present, if it exists in a more fundamental relationship to time structure, then accessing near future information wouldn't require breaking causality. It would just require a different tuning mechanism. But here's what should make you pause. We're treating this like a discovery, like humanity just stumbled onto something new, something that required electrodes and quantum random number generators and DARPA funding to validate. But what if we didn't discover it? What if we just forgot it? You know that feeling you get sometimes, when your friend calls you out of nowhere, right when you were thinking about her, when you change lanes seconds before the car behind you loses control, when you cancel the flight that ends up delayed for 12 hours, when you just have a bad feeling about someone who later turns out to be exactly what your gut warned you about. You felt it. We all have. That moment when your body knows something before your brain catches up, that split second where intuition screams louder than logic. That eerie sense that you've been here before, or that you know what's coming next, even though rationally, impossibly, you couldn't. We call it coincidence, we call it luck, we call it just a feeling. But every spiritual tradition, every indigenous wisdom keeper, every lineage of mystics and seers, they've been teaching this for thousands of years not as hypothesis, not as experiment, as lived reality. They didn't need meta-analyses. They had direct experience. The shamans weren't special. 
The yogis weren't superhuman. The oracles weren't touched by gods. They just paid attention differently. They cultivated a relationship with time that we've systematically trained ourselves out of. They developed practices, meditation, fasting, plant medicines, breathwork, ritual, that quieted the conscious mind enough to let the pre-conscious signals rise to the surface. They made space for the body to speak the language it's always been speaking. What modern science calls predictive anticipatory activity, they called listening. What researchers measure as tiny shifts in the body, they experienced as the texture of the immediate future. What appears in our data as statistical anomaly, they lived as direct perception. The convergence isn't coincidence. Ancient practice and modern experiment are circling the same mystery from opposite directions. One mapped the territory from inside consciousness, the other from outside. And in the middle, in that space where subjective experience meets objective measurement, something real is happening. Something that suggests consciousness isn't what we thought it was. Something that suggests time isn't what we thought it was. Something that suggests you, sitting there right now, listening to this are capable of so much more than you've been taught to believe. So where does this leave us? If the future can ripple backward, if consciousness isn't confined to the razor's edge of the present but sprawls across temporal dimensions, we barely comprehend. If your body has been sampling probability landscapes this entire time, feeling the weight of what's approaching before it arrives, maybe that's the real secret that the future was never ahead of you. It's inside you, pressing outward. Every pulse you feel right now is an echo from what's about to happen. Every breath is the collapse of a thousand possible tomorrows into one single now. You think you're moving through time, but what if time is moving through you, flowing like a current through the shape of your attention? bending itself around the questions you dare to ask. Listen closely. That flicker behind your eyes. That quiet vertigo when you realize you've heard this thought before. That's the future remembering you.